Howdy freeze dryers, welcome back to the Live Life Simple freeze drying room. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about upgrading a freeze dryer pump, uh, more than just the one that comes with a Harvest Dry freeze dryer. So today we're gonna go over pretty much the Cadillac or some might say the Ferrari of freeze drying pumps uh, that you can upgrade to use a freeze dryer. It will need a few modifications, we're gonna go over that today also. But I wanna show you this pump, we wanna give it a test run and uh, see if it's a viable option for you. So why would someone want to upgrade their freeze dryer vacuum pump? There's a, a few different scenarios. Uh, one, freeze drying has been around now for over 10 years, 12 years, maybe even more than that. Uh, some of the freeze dryers have gone through vacuum pumps and some of the early freeze drying vacuum pumps were not so great. Uh, technology and just uh, the availability of way better ones has, uh, has, has been available. But if you're in the market for a new option, uh, this pump that we're gonna talk about today might be a good option for you. Second scenario is if you are in a commercial setting or you are freeze drying constantly or freeze drying for a business, reliability, quality, and all of the characteristics that you want in a freeze dryer vacuum pump are going to be met in this pump behind me. So without any further ado, let's show you what we have today. This pump is the labeled Neo D16. This is an oil sealed pump. It's extremely high quality. This is what they use in commercial settings, in laboratories, also in aerospace settings. And it may be hard to gauge the size and the girth of this pump, but this is sitting next to my XL freeze dryer, which is huge. And you can see that this required its own table. This is all of 120 pounds. It was shipped uh, on a small pallet from the company. Uh, every piece and part on this machine is extremely well built. It's all metal. There's no cheesy parts on this thing. And even though this vacuum pump is not specifically designed for freeze drying, it has many qualities that will lend itself to freeze drying. I'm gonna go over those right now. So if you know about freeze drying vacuum pumps, you know that water is a big problem. And this has a gas ballast which will release water vapor just like many of the, uh, the freeze drying pumps that you're used to. It also has an oil filter and it also has a one and a half quart oil reservoir. And according to what I've heard and the manual, it's supposed to be very quiet as well. We're actually gonna put that to the test later on in the video. Another really important quality of freeze drying vacuum pumps and just really vacuum pumps in general is the CFM rating. And this has a much higher CFM rating than you would typically see in freeze dryer pumps. And I know freeze dryers hate changing oil. The good news is because this is so efficient, this oil can last up to three years. You heard me right, three years. Because this pump is made for many different types of applications, there are a few modifications that have to be made to use this with the freeze dryer, uh, in this case, specifically the Harvest Right freeze dryer. So you'll notice that I'm using the Harvest Right factory vacuum hose, but the fitting for the vacuum hose to the pump is just a little bit different. These have a different type of fitting that is more of a sleeve type fitting. So in order to link it up with this vacuum hose, you need to get this part and this part right here. And you would think a vacuum pump of this nature and size would need some serious power. It does not actually need a lot of power. This will run on a standard uh, 120 volt socket, but it does need a little modification. So typically the vacuum pump on a freeze dryer is plugged into this little outlet right here on the back of the freeze dryer. And that means the freeze dryer is telling the vacuum pump the proper time to turn on. Just because this is a bigger pump, it could potentially draw more amperage, even though it probably does not. And it could technically be plugged in to the outlet in the rear of the freeze dryer. This is just bypassing more or less the freeze dryer and making it so it will still communicate in the same way, but this can be plugged directly into the wall. Uh, this setup was actually created by another YouTuber, Epicenter Brian. And I'll put a link to his video uh, going over why he created this system uh, for another circumstance, but it also applies to if you are adding this pump to your current setup. And now that we've kind of gone over the basics of this pump, I'm dying to get this thing fired up. I want to hear what it sounds like. I want to hear the noise level. I also want to see how fast it draws a vacuum and uh, maybe just a few other things too. We're going to go into our main screen 
on the harvest right, you just need to click this leaf right here. That'll bring you to your functional testing screen. If you click this vacuum button right here, that will actually turn the vacuum on. So when I do this, the freeze dryer is gonna tell the, uh, the vacuum pump system that we created to turn the vacuum pump on. This will give us a chance to see what this pump sounds like. Uh, I'm gonna test the decibel reading of it and see how it compares with the, uh, the manufacturer's claim. And then we'll also see how long it takes this to uh, pull this uh, vacuum down to 2000 mTOR. So mTORs are falling. I'm gonna set up my decibel meter about 10 feet away like I usually do and we will see once this thing is warmed up what kind of decibel reading we're gonna get. Right around 64 right now. Let's check and see what our mTORs are at. So we've been running for just about two minutes. We're down to 3600 right now, 3500. You can see it's falling pretty fast. All right, so we just went under 2000 at two minutes and 20 seconds. For this big XL machine, that is pretty fast. So as this warms up, it is getting quieter. So I wanna give us uh, maybe like five or six minutes to, uh, to keep going, just because once that oil gets warm and the pump gets warmed up and everything, it usually does get quieter. While we're waiting for that, let's check back on our M tours. Been running for just about six minutes now. It's down to 600 M tours. I think that uh, if you mess with the ballast a little bit, different settings will give you a little bit different decibel reading. I also think I'm getting some, uh, some resonating sound off of this metal table. Probably be different if it had something that it could absorb some sound on the bottom of it. So at the 10 minute mark, we're hovering right around 61 to 62 decibels. That's pretty quiet for an industrial pump. mTORs are down to 497. I don't remember how that compares to the Premier pump for the XL. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description for the video of my review that has all of that information in it. So let's recap this labeled Neo D16 pump. It has a lot of things going for it. Uh, for freeze drying especially, it's, uh, its ability to shed water, it's very well built. The oil changes are very infrequent and it also has a built-in oil filter if you do not like oil changes. How's every three years sound? That sounds pretty fair to me. I'm excited to put this pump through the paces over the next few months. I'll kind of keep everyone updated on how that goes. Uh, the price is quite a bit higher than a typical freeze dryer vacuum pump, but if you weigh out the pros and cons, it might be worth it to you, especially if you're in a business or a commercial setting. Uh, this is a laboratory pump. It's, it's extremely high standards of how it's built. I hope you found today's video helpful and informational. Please, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments, or you can join our Facebook or MeWe groups and uh, ask those questions away in there. It's Retired at 40s freeze drying group. In the meantime, remember to live life simple. I'll catch you next week.